just feel the kick of the body. It doesn't do anything. What is that? So I just got this guitar, 50 bucks. 3.7 rating out of five. I mean, best bang for buck, right? The reviews are mixed and to be honest, I'm not so sure. But I wonder how this compares to this. This $50,000 guitar, oh, unbelievable. And can I, with just some basic tools, make this $50 guitar play and sound a little bit like this $50,000 guitar? Let's go. So today I thought it would be fun to look at the extremes. Like what does money get you when you go all in? And what do you get when you get the cheapest possible? So this is the cheapest guitar I could find. The philosophy must have been how can we make a guitar as fast and cheap as possible so we can all benefit from the low price. But what can we expect from such a guitar? Is it even playable? How does it sound? Is it a good guitar to start out with? Or is it the worst gift for a beginner guitarist you can possibly buy? And I'm comparing that to the holy grail for vintage acoustics and maybe even the most copied guitar of all time, the Martin Dreadnought. And to be more precise, a D28 from the year 1943. And thank you so much for letting me use this guitar for this video. So this is a guitar from the so-called golden era of Martin guitars, and it is extremely rare, hence the price of $50,000. So this, this guitar is roughly a thousand times more expensive than this one. But does it sound a thousand times better? So first we gotta talk about the obvious, right? This D28 does not sound like a $50,000 guitar, right? Nothing does. Nothing ever will sound like a $50,000 thing. <laughs> the value is not only the sound, but also the fact that this guitar is highly collectible. So there is only a few left, let alone in this remarkable condition. So that drives up the price, just like a painting. It features the extraordinary and rare Brazilian rosewood back inside. Just look at how lovely it looks super straight grained, and a beautiful Adirondack spruce top. Scalloped X bracing, diamond inlays, the herringbone trim around the side, just all the good stuff. But not only that, the guitar also sounds like no other guitar I've ever played. And I hope you can hear it in this demo. I mean, I'm sure you can. It's just the sound. And it's a, it, it's a sound you can only get out of a vintage guitar, these high quality guitars, they do get better year after year and it's not something you can just fake. And I think if you're into that vintage guitar sound, this is probably the best you can get or real close anyway. So playing these guitars, you can't get around the fact that the cheap guitar is just, it's so much work to play this thing. I would probably give up after a week. The action is just ridiculously high. The neck feels like horrible. I just don't know what it is, but I've never felt this shape before on a guitar. And that's probably for a reason because it just doesn't feel very comfortable. 
The frets are sticking out at the top of the bottom. They're totally smudged and covered in paint. It's this has got to be the most horrible paint job I've ever seen on a guitar. The rosette is just a sticker that's been smacked on poorly. There's glue literally everywhere, like the insides, the outsides, and it smells... What is that? There's a lot of brown... <laughs> what happened putting this guitar together? There's like brown stuff on the inside. That is gross. We gotta talk about the tuners as well. Like when I turn these, it's like nails on a chalkboard. It feels ugh, scary to turn them even. The intonation is way off. When playing a chord down low, it's in tune. When I go higher, it's out of tune. So just before recording this video, I, I think I found out why, because <laughs> you won't believe this. The bridge at the back is actually coming off. There's no contact. And whenever I pull the strings or push the bridge, I see it wiggling and I'm really afraid it can come off when I tune the strings. It's honestly pretty dangerous, I guess. And the saddle is just completely hanging forward. <sighs> I mean, honestly, this guitar is just a piece of junk. But before you think you have to spend massive amounts of money on a guitar, which you don't, let me be clear about that. Let's do another demo and then let's have a closer look at the $50,000 guitar. <laughs> So sure, this guitar is almost 80 years old. And when you look at it, there's a lovely patina on the, on the top and on the back, everywhere, to be honest. It just tells a story, every scratch, every ding. But it still feels so sturdy and beautifully built. And if you've got some experience playing and holding fancy guitars, you just know you can't fake it. So first of all, the thing that stands out most is the neck of the guitar. It's super comfortable. It, it actually feels thinner than my D42, which surprises me. Also, the guitar is so much lighter than my D42. And even the insides look beautiful, and that's always a tell of a great guitar. So now it's time to discuss the sound. And with all the comparisons you've heard so far, I'm sure you've got some thoughts about that too. So feel free to let me know in the comments what you think. We all know that resonance is a big part of the sound quality, since sound is just resonating air. So it has to start somewhere. So when playing such a vintage Dreadnought Martin, you just can't believe your ears. As you strum the guitar, the power, the volume, the energy that comes out of it is just unheard of. And you start to wonder if there's like an acoustic amp turned on somewhere and you haven't seen it. The sound just blows up in such a gorgeous way with wonderful overtones. Creating more than you thought was possible. It's The sound is also extremely balanced, from thick lows to a lively mid-range and a crisp top end, and it's unexpectedly lightweight, and that's why it's so resonant. The edge of the wood made it dry, super stiff and super resonant, so somehow I always like lightweight guitars, and I think this is no exception. Uh, it honestly feels like it's punching you in the belly when you strum the chord. You just feel the kick of the body. You feel it pumping, it's just insane. So when you do the same with the cheaper guitar... It, it doesn't do anything. When I play the chord, I just don't feel the body or the guitar resonating at all. The sound just pops off, off the strings, into the void, 
the guitar doesn't enhance the sound, it doesn't do anything. I, I guess if you just have a piece of wood with strings attached, it, it would probably sound the same. So, and that is because all the little elements combined, this laminated wood, it, it's cheaper, it's not always bad, honestly, but in this case it is. There's also massive amounts of glue, as I told you, and that just sucks the life out of the tone entirely. Of course, also the construction of the bracing, the neck, where the neck meets the body, it's everything combined, and that's why it sounds... It sounds bad. So actually, when playing a guitar, uh, playability is more important to me than anything. It doesn't matter how good a guitar is or how good it sounds. If it plays badly, I just don't want it. It has to feel like an extension of me. Super easy to play, so everything I can think of comes out. And this Martin, it plays like a dream. I just can't believe it. It plays better than most of my own acoustics. Which is annoying. On a cheaper guitar though, it's not that easy. Like the action, as I told you, is extremely high. And I wondered if I, with some basic tools everyone got lying around, can fix that. Let's find out. The first suspect was the neck, but the relief was within the spec, so I wanted to take some height off of the saddle. It turned out there wasn't a whole lot of room to lower it, but I did my best. So there was a piece, a thing stuck under the bridge piece of wood. This didn't do too much for the guitar actually, so I figured the nut slots needed some attention. This is already beyond what you can expect from a beginner, but eh, let's just give it a try. This made playing down at the lower frets a little easier, but honestly... Okay, so that didn't work. I can't get the action lower than this, and it's still way, 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 way too high. So that means the whole construction is just bad. You can't have this guitar and let it play nicely. You should not buy this guitar. But there is also some good news, because I also bought a few guitars that are a little more expensive, but still pretty cheap and affordable. And these, well, these aren't that bad, to be honest. This one, for example. And this one. play fine. I mean, they don't sound all that great, but not bad value for the money. So if there's a takeaway here, don't buy the cheapest guitar on Amazon. Maybe check out some guitars around the 80, 100 bucks mark, but maybe a better idea, check out secondhand guitars. So now about that Martin. You hear people say all the time that a guitar above 2K or, or maybe 1500 even, makes no sense, it doesn't get better above that. But I don't agree to that actually. So let's say 1500, 2000 brings you to 90% and they can be awesome guitars, like the best guitars you will ever need. After that, the smaller increases just are going to cost you thousands and thousands. And for some that is worth it, and for other, it's just a dream, which is great as well. Dreaming is fun, it's, it's the best part about life. But this made me wonder, at what kind of value do we find the best bang for buck? I would love to hear what you think about that. Where does the money we invest still yield in a result that justifies the, the amount of money that you spend on it? An interesting discussion as well, maybe something for another video. Anyway, if you're just as much into acoustics as I am, I would love for you to check out my brand new acoustic guitar course, Acoustic Adventure, where we're learning so many great styles and genres from finger picking the blues to strumming to flat picking, all the good stuff. It's a true celebration of the acoustic guitar. More info on that can be found at acousticadventure.com. And for now, I just want to thank you for watching and letting me have a great time with this guitar. Anyway, cheers guys. Yeah.